Hello everybody and welcome to yet another world famous Tech Check Tuesday. And once again today we have the Mavic Air and we are taking a closer look at its gesture control system that DJI now calls Smart Control. To harken back to about nine months ago when DJI blew us all away when they released their cute little spark drone with this gesture control system. If you also remember, I was in this very field testing and reviewing that drone and I was a bit underwhelmed and unimpressed. It was finicky. It only worked about 50% of the time. You had to get the gestures just right and you looked like a total idiot while you're trying to get it to work. And with the Mavic Air, They've stripped it all the way back to ground zero and revamped it from the ground up and made it all new and all awesome. So today is all about taking a second look at that. Does it actually work? Can you do what you need to do? And is there any practical reason you would actually use this feature? Hmm. Okay, so let's get the DJI GO 4 app fired up and ready to go first. We'll need to go to the smart controls section indicated by the RC controller icon and go to smart capture so now I could set the controller down and try to take control with my hands over the drone place both hands palms out together in front of your face and then spread them apart to move the drone backwards. It only seems to go back about 20 feet. I can't get it to go back any further than about 20. That's kind of unfortunate. I can go about 12 feet up. And about three feet off the ground. Left. And to the right. Flash a peace sign to take a picture. But this also was somewhat confusing for the drone because it couldn't always decide if I was trying to take a picture or if I was still trying to control it with my palm. It even followed my hand when I tried to put it at my side. It's still following my palm. There we go. Now if you make the framing gesture It'll start recording and auto following you. But running directly under it caused it to lose contact. If you're out of the frame, the drone can't find you to reinitiate smart control. And you might not know you're out of frame without the controller. I'm trying to get it to regain uh, contact with me. It's not recognizing me for some reason. Okay, so I guess that the panning panned down too far when I ran under it. Let's try again. That went flawlessly. Okay, and now to try to land it. You can land it with just your palm. It's beginning to sprinkle a little bit, so I need to hurry this up. But there's supposed to be a way that you can launch the Mavic Air in gesture mode without using a controller or cell phone or anything else. So let's give that a quick try. 
First of all, you need to power on the drone. Now, the drone has such a low stance to the ground that putting it anywhere in any kind of grass, even short grass like here in this sports field, would obstruct the camera and not allow it to pick you up to enable its gesture control. If you tap that blinking light in the back, it's actually a button. Tap it twice. You'll get that funny sound there, and the drone will start looking for you. Yep, you'll see the green lights blink, and the motors will start. All right, she's picked me up. You can't really control how much faster it moves. Even if you swing your body faster, it lags way behind you. And if you're too close, the drone will only go up about eye level. It refuses to go any higher. You'll have to move back. So what do I think of this gesture control system? Well, it does what it says it does, and it certainly sucks less than it did on the Spark. That also gets me thinking about safety standpoint. If you don't have a controller or cell phone fired up to actually have physical controls over the drone, if something went wrong and your drone started drifting or flying away from you, there would be no chance that you could save it by just using your hands, especially if the gesture control only works about 75% of the time anyway. And I can only speak for myself because I'm not a selfie shooter. I do mostly cinematic stuff. It's super limited in what you can and can't do. You could trigger it to take photographs. You can fly maybe 20 feet away from yourself. You can start and stop video recording and active track, which might be cool for maybe a snowboarder or something. But in my case, I don't think I would ever use it. So at least in my case, I would rather have DJI put their time and research dollars into maybe finding a way to cram OcuSync or something into this drone than putting it on something that seems more like a party trick or gimmick to me. Thank you so much for joining me on this Tech Check Tuesday. I'm doing these just about every Tuesday. I also have some videos that I sprinkle in at random times when something sparks my fancy. And I do drone ventures where I take my drone out into the wild somewhere and do some filming of some cool crazy destination. Make sure you check those out too. If you like what you see, let me know by hitting the old thumbs up. You wanna see more of it, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you know when one comes up, have yourself an awesome day, and we'll see you very soon. Once again, thank you for joining me on this Tech Check Tuesday. Once again, thank you for joining me on this Tech Tech. Once again, thank you for joining me on this Tech Tech. Man. Once again, thank you so much for joining me on this Tech Check Tuesday. I'm doing these just about every Tuesday, and I've got some drone ventures coming up. 